I'm currently in Mumbai, India, and when I told people that I'm coming to Mumbai, I had so many people tell me, Mike, be careful of the traffic, it's dangerous, it's so crowded. So right now, I'm gonna do something that is maybe not the safest thing in the world. I'm gonna try and cross the road. Just remember, Mike, look left, look right. I made it. <sighs> because death could be just around the corner. Just yesterday, I heard some sirens and I looked outside of the window and there were fire engines and police cars and police bikes outside and I was wondering what's happening. And a massive tree had fallen down onto the road outside. Now fortunately no one was seriously injured. There was a few guys that had to be taken to hospital just for checkups but given the size of the tree and how crowded the roads are here in Mumbai it could have very easily killed someone. Imagine just commuting home from work and suddenly a tree just bops you on the head and that's it game over. I have a friend who is about the same age as me and a few years ago she was diagnosed with a tumour and she was in this awful predicament of having to plan for her own death. Now that was a few years ago and fortunately, very fortunately, she is a lot better now. But I was on a Zoom call with her earlier today and I asked her, after experiencing this kind of near death experience, what is the one thing that you've learned when it comes to living in the present? To increase the length of your actual time living, you actually have to live in every moment and give your full attention while you're in the moment and not just drift away or wish that this would be over soon. Actually being there increases your quality of life a lot and the feeling of the length of time. And that right there is one of my biggest regrets when I was in my 20s. I just feel like I was so goal oriented and I would have one goal, then the next, then the next. But when I hit a goal, I would never just live in the present. I would never celebrate it. I would be straight onto the second goal. And that's something that I've really been focusing on trying to improve in my 30s. <laughs> So figure this one out. Historically, birds of prey eat rabbits, right? Well, check this out. There's a rabbit, and if you look up at the sky, there's dozens of massive birds of prey. And he doesn't even care, he's just sleeping. What a brave rabbit. I love the quote that my friend wrote on LinkedIn the other day. He said, we can die at any moment. Until then, we should live. And I think that's why it's so important to really think about where your time is going because for every second that you procrastinate, those seconds turn into minutes, those minutes turn into hours, those hours turn into days and before you know it, it's game over. Okay, that'll do, that'll do for that one. I don't want to have to do that again and my shoes are getting really dirty from this mud. See what I do for you guys. So it's not necessarily what you know, but it's more who you know, right? So about five months ago, a guy by the name of Shivam Jha reached out to me on LinkedIn. He found the content that I post on YouTube inspiring, and I found the content that he posts on LinkedIn inspiring. And so we connected, and five months later, I'm here in Mumbai, and I'm gonna go and meet him. He's now actually head of the sales operations in Playstart, one of uh, our businesses. And it all started out with him reaching out to me on LinkedIn. So I'm at a coffee shop now, but I'm gonna head over to another coffee shop where I'm going to go and meet him for the first time face to face. There was this huge Harvard study. It was started about 85 years ago and it's still ongoing. So it's one of the longest studies in the world. And it's basically measuring the number one thing that makes a person happy in life. And what they found or what they're finding after 85 years of this continuous study is that the one thing that makes an individual happy is what they call social fitness. Meaning are the, the people around you, are they helping you build yourself up 
or are they dragging you down? It's so important that we kind of surround ourselves with good people because at the end of the day, we're humans and we thrive on social connections. And that's why it's so important to have a solid network around you. I cannot emphasize how important that is. So this is something that I've learned from Simon Sinek, and it's this idea that people are applying finite rules to infinite games. People are thinking far too short term rather than long term, and they wonder why it's not working. But the people that are thinking in the long term, in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years time, they're always going to outperform people that are just thinking short term. And Simon uses the example of the Vietnam War, and he says, This is also what happened to the United States in Vietnam. The United States was fighting to win. The Viet Cong were fighting for their lives. They would fight forever if necessary. Basically, the US lost the Vietnamese War because they were playing by finite rules in an infinite game. They were just trying to win, whereas the Vietnamese were just trying to survive. And the thing is, is that most of the games that are worth playing in life, they're infinite games. Your health, your wealth, the people around you. They're not goals with a final destination. The idea is that you just keep moving forward. The idea of eating healthily is not about being on a diet for one month and then giving up. The idea is to just keep eating healthily. It's the same with marriage. The idea of marriage is not to be married for one year, two years, but it's to stay married. There's no end goal. It's a continuous journey. It's the same with business. The idea is to stay in business. And if you combine all of these infinite games, you're working on your health, you're working on your wealth, you're working on having good, positive, supportive people around you, and and you're working continuously on your happiness, then at least by my definition of success, you are successful. I honestly believe that one of, if not the best personal development hack there is out there is to travel to a different country where no one speaks the language and just exist, just survive. Because that's where my personal development journey started back in 2013. I traveled to Bangkok for the first time and honestly, it was one of the best things I've ever done. Right now I'm in India and I'm vlogging down this quiet street because I'm scared to vlog with such an expensive camera actually on the street. But it's coming to countries like this that are so different to what I'm used to back in the UK, in Vietnam, or any other countries that I've lived in. India is so, so different. Okay, so I don't normally talk about dating advice on this channel because dating is so culturally specific, but this is too powerful not to talk about. I really think this could be the best dating advice that is out there. I get this question asked quite a lot, Mike, how do I find the perfect partner? And it's like, you're asking the complete wrong question. You should be asking, how do I become the perfect partner? So this actually isn't too difficult to do. What you do is you write out a list of things that you really want to find in a partner, right? So these could be integrity, it could be a good job, it could be loyal, trustworthy, intelligent, and you write this list down. And then you work the next three months, the next six months, the next 12 months on becoming that person. And what you'll find is that there'll be this kind of paradigm shift where instead of you looking for a partner, you'll attract those kinds of people into your life. As you become that person, you'll attract those kind of people. As they say, birds of a feather flock together. You'll start to attract people like that. And answer me this, if we all worked on ourselves every single day, would the world not be a better place? I like the idea of putting your own oxygen mask on first. The idea of being selfishly selfless. I put my own mental and physical health first before anyone else's. I put my own finances first. I put my own happiness first. I make sure that I'm stable. And once I have that stable foundation, then I can go and help and support the people around me. Because if you have no money, how can you financially help the people around you? How can you give to charity? If you're not happy, how can you be a happy mother, a happy father, a happy son, daughter, friend, partner, spouse? How can you spread positive energy if you're depressed? And I think also that comes from a, a male's perspective as well. Rightly or wrongly, society tends to put 
that pressure onto men to be that rock figure, to be that stable foundation. But I think whatever your gender, you should be aiming for that stability so that you're that rock for the people around you. It's similar to what I was saying about dating. If you want to look for the perfect partner, you don't look externally, right? You look internally. And it's the same if you want to be the best mother, father, whatever. If you want to have the best relationships around you, then you should look internally and build yourself up from within. And I'm actually in love with this place. I've been talking for so long, I have an audience. Are you kidding me? The cutest audience member. So I've started a lot of things over the last 10 years or so. I've failed a lot of things over the last 10 years or so. And I've always felt like a complete idiot doing them. I remember buying a camera for the first time in like 2018 and making a video and putting it on YouTube and the lighting was terrible, the color grading was terrible, like it was just all terrible. But I think it's very important to get comfortable looking like a fool. Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung once said, the fool is the precursor to the savior. It takes courage to make a move when you don't know what you're doing and you're just kind of stumbling your way through. But if you don't make that first step, then nothing is ever going to happen. So firstly, oh my goodness, look at this sunset. I don't know whether the camera can pick that up, but that's incredible. Secondly, I'm gonna be making more vlog style videos like this. So if you do want to see more of these type of videos, instead of just talking head videos, then let me know in the comments. I did recently just upload another vlog about two or three months ago called why you should leave your hometown 24 hours in Bangkok. If you love this video, you're gonna absolutely love that video. Go and check it out. Click the card on the screen.